So here's what happens inside your body when you first start ketosis. It's a pretty miraculous thing, and it's pretty darn simple when you actually look at it. So I'm gonna break it down with really simple analogies. I'm gonna break it down in simple caloric terms that you can understand, and then I'll also break it down in a cellular level for those of you that wanna feel a little bit smart or that just know the basic science already and wanna know how it's actually working within your body. So we'll touch on all of it. Hey, we've got new videos coming out all the time, almost every single day. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. And after you watch this video, please check out ButcherBox down below in the description. So if you eat meat, if you eat beef, if you eat chicken, if you eat pork, any of that stuff, you wanna be getting good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat. So make sure you check out ButcherBox. They're a meat delivery service, but they've done it right, okay? So they make it so you can get grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered directly to your doorstep, cheaper than what you would pay at even a discount grocery store. It's really amazing. And honestly, if you use the link below, you also get a special discount on it. So after you've learned something from this video, go check them out and get some grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered to your doorstep. Okay, let's break this down really simply. The first thing that we have to look at to understand this whole process is how the brain works. The brain uses 500 calories per day. This little two to three pound sucker inside our noggin uses 500 calories, okay? And almost all of that energy is coming from pure glucose. Okay, glucose, blood sugar, same thing, right? Our brain is running on sugar. So you're probably thinking, well, why should I do ketosis? I won't have any glucose. No, trust me, your brain will still function. And after you hear me out in this video, it'll all make sense. So your brain would normally get this glucose from either your bloodstream, or it would get it from what's called liver glycogen. Liver glycogen is carbohydrate that is stored inside your liver. Okay, it's stored inside your liver specifically for reasons like this, so that when you are not eating and your blood sugar is a little bit lower, no problem, it pulls from the liver glycogen. But there's an issue. Our liver only holds about 600 calories worth of energy via carbohydrate. Uh-oh, our brain demands 500 a day and our liver only holds 600. So the moment that we start going into a deficit, we're depleting that. That could be a problem, right? So you start doing the math. And when we look at how ketosis works, it all makes a lot of sense. So all it would take is one day of fasting before your liver glycogen is depleted because your brain has taken demand and it said, I need these carbohydrates, so it's drained the liver and you haven't been refueling. So your brain ends up zapping your liver glycogen. Well, okay, in a simple theory, that would mean that your body would have no choice but to start breaking down your muscle tissue. Okay, because what happens is your body can take muscle tissue and break it down into sugar. So by this theory, the simple thing is that once we are starving for even a day or depriving ourselves of carbohydrates for just a little bit, our body would start to break down muscle tissue and we'd waste away. Now, that doesn't make sense because of course we would be extinct if that happened. Okay, if you look at it from an evolutionary standpoint, the moment that someone would start to you know, not be able to find food for a day or two, their body would waste away and eventually they'd have no muscle mass and no, they'd atrophy to the point where they'd die. So because of this, our body has created a unique mechanism that our body actually thrives on, and it's called ketosis. And we're gonna explain exactly how it works because it's really fascinating. So first I'm gonna summarize this in very general terminology, and then I'll explain a little bit what happens at the cellular level, but I promise I'll make it easy so it's fun and you can understand it. Okay, so in summary, when we consume carbohydrates, normally that would restore our liver glycogen, which would fuel our brain. Okay, but additionally, when we consume carbohydrates, it also triggers something called insulin. Okay, insulin is the absorptive hormone, causes us to store fat, but it also does a lot of other things in the body. Insulin is like a brake pedal on the process of creating ketones. Because when we have insulin coming in, we have insulin up elevated, there's no need to create ketones because we have plenty of blood glucose, right? So it has its foot on the brake pedal stopping ketogenesis stopping ketones from being created. The moment that insulin levels lessen, it lets off the brake pedal and ketones can start being created. That's why when you do keto, you're cutting out carbohydrates because you're lessening insulin. Carbohydrates equal insulin. Less carbohydrates or no carbohydrates equal no or very little insulin, which means the brake pedal is off and now it can create ketones. Okay, so now that we know this, we can take a look at what's happening at the cellular level and how your body actually pulls from its body fat stores 
to create ketones. And this is really fascinating stuff. So whenever you hear people talking about all these magical ketone bodies, this is all they are. They're just simple things that your body has basically repackaged because your body knows how to do that. So you start with belly fat, right? You start with fat on your body, adipose tissue, okay? This body fat tissue breaks down into what are called free fatty acids. Basically, they're the mobilized form of your body fat, okay? And they float through the bloodstream once they're mobilized and they go to the liver, okay? Because the liver metabolizes them. And once they hit the liver, they get acted upon by a bunch of different enzymes with really long names, okay? So the liver breaks it down, and once it's broken down, then it can enter into what's called the mitochondria, okay? It can enter into an area of the cell within the liver that allows it to get turned into energy, okay? Now, it does this via the carnitine shuttle pathway. Now, carnitine, palmitoyl transferase, all these big, long, fancy words. The point is, is there's specific things that work along with these fatty acids to get them to the right place because the liver is smart. Once inside that mitochondria, those fatty acids that were once just your body fat get broken down into two acetyl coenzyme A compounds. Now, if you remember biology, you'll know what acetyl coenzyme A, but honestly, I just don't want you to even worry about it right now. Basically, this is standard fat burning. This is normal. This is what happens inside the body no matter what, okay? Now, those two acetyl coenzyme A compounds get converted into something known as acetoacetate. This is a ketone. So when we do not have carbohydrates, the fat that normally gets broken down gets packaged up into a ketone. And those ketones can be used by our cells. But it doesn't stop just there. For those of you that want to know a little bit more about how this works, we start with acetoacetate, one of the ketones, and then that gets acted upon another enzyme, and it gets turned into beta-hydroxybutyrate. So if you know about ketosis, you know about beta-hydroxybutyrate because everyone's always talking about it. So beta-hydroxybutyrate is the popular thing, but really beta-hydroxybutyrate is like the suitcase. You see, acetoacetate gets packaged up into beta-hydroxybutyrate so that it can travel, so that it can leave the liver. So then what happens is you have a ketone that's hot and ready to create energy, and it gets stuffed into a suitcase, okay? And then it gets stuffed into a suitcase, and then it has to ride on what's called the monocarboxylate transport chain, okay? So it has to ride on this monocarboxylate transporter. And the way that you can explain it is it's like all this bent-up energy, okay? This million dollars is stuffed into a suitcase, and this suitcase is put into a van, okay? And this van drives it out of the liver and it drives it to a cell. And when it gets to the cell, that van drives inside the cell, just like in a, like a Bruce Willis movie, right? It drives inside the garage, the garage closes, and it's never to be seen again. And then the luggage comes out of the van and voila, it opens up and there's your million dollars. And there's the energy. So ketones have a unique ability to get packaged up put on a special van, delivered directly to the cell, inserted into the cell, and then unpackaged inside the cell where it's totally safe. Hence why you get so much energy on a ketogenic diet. And this is all simply because you didn't consume carbohydrates and your body went to its quote unquote backup mechanism to create energy. But its backup mechanism to create energy happens to be one of the most powerful ways to create energy because your body is at a point in time where it's desperate for energy, so the energy that it does get is very efficient so that the body could go out and get more energy from other food sources. So it's a very effective way to have energy. And of course, lose weight because your energy is coming from your fat stores. So this is what's happening inside your body when you start a ketogenic diet at the cellular level. It's simple but complex at the same time. The point is, it's perfectly safe. It's sound from an evolutionary standpoint, and it works. I'll see you in the next video.